Hey everyone, hi, I am Akash and I welcome you all to this channel. So friends, I know that videos are not getting uploaded very frequently, but we all know that developer is not so easy. Okay, we have learned it. Some weeks are really hectic. So things apart, in this video we will discuss the front-end DSA questions uh, that were asked to me in ClearTrip interview. But before this, uh, let me tell you the interview process. So I applied through LinkedIn, okay, and then I got a call from the HR and uh, then the interview round started. So they were like around four to five rounds. Uh, let's have a look at those rounds. So friends, the first round was machine coding round and it was more of a drive. Like they were like around 30 to 30, uh, 20 to 30 uh, people. And like we got a problem statement to solve and we were given like around one to two hours to solve that particular question. And then we have to, you know, we had to uh, like upload that particular zip in their portal. So after that i got selected for the first round then the second round was code review round in which the interviewer came and he like asked me like why what was my thinking and uh, why i have written this particular code in this particular manner all those questions were there so i have also cleared that particular round so the third round was the ds round the fourth round was like system design and after that was the hr discussion so in this particular video we are going to discuss the ds round so in DS round, uh, the interview came and he asked me to open any online code editor of my choice. Okay. So, yeah. So friends, uh, before like having a look at the question, I want to tell you one thing, like if you want any career guidance or if you want to connect with me, okay, you can connect to me over this particular link. I will drop this link in the description box. Go check it out. So now let's have a look at the first question. So friends, the first question was to find a pivot in an array such that left some is equals to the right array sum which means uh, let's suppose this is the array that was given to us now and if i say that this 2 is a pivot so it means that the elements that are towards its left and the elements that are toward its right their sum should be equal so 1 plus 4 is 5 and 5 plus 0 is also 5 so that means this 2 is a pivot so the approach that came to my mind was that i will run one loop and I will target each of these elements like 1, 4, 2, 5, 0. And for each of these elements, for let's suppose I am targeting 2 right now, what I will do is I will find the left sum and I will find the right sum. And if the left sum and right sum for that particular target is equal, it means that is my pivot. I hope the approach is clear. Now let's quickly code it. First, let's create a function. And this function will take this array. Now let's quickly calculate the length, array dot length. Now friends, we are going to run first loop so that we can target each of these elements. Now inside this, what we are going to do is we are going to calculate the left sum and the right sum. So cool. Friends, what we have done over here is we have just simply let's suppose uh, 2 is our target. So what we have done is we have pointed our j to i minus 1 which means 4 and we have run a loop from 4 till 1 and we have calculated the left sum. So similarly what we can do is we can calculate the right sum as well. For right sum what we have to do is we have to run a loop from i plus 1 till the end. So cool, um, we have calculated the right sum also. Now what we can do is, we can simply have one check that is if left sum, if it is equal equals to the right sum, it means that we have found our pivot and we can return the i. Or else what we can do is simply return minus 1 from here. Cool. So let's check it. Let's console log. result so friends as we can see we have got the result as 2 which is our pivot let's quickly try it with another uh, you know input 
so cool as we can see we have got the result as 3 3 which means we are returning the pivot not the element over here 0 1 2 2 was its index okay and over here um, it's 2 3 5 uh, 4 9 5 4 9 1 it means 0 1 2 3 so yeah so 3 will be the pivot cool so this was the first question and friends as we all know after this one of the most famous line came that can you write the more optimal solution so i just you know i kind of thought for like few minutes and after that i said that uh, i am not able to think of any further optimal solution so yeah so then we move to the next question so let's have a look at the second question now so friends the next question that was asked to me uh, the interview asked me uh, that can you write a tree structure like you can make a tree like structure in which we have a root and its left and right nodes so i asked him like uh, okay so do you want any operations performed or just a tree structure so he said that uh, just a tree structure so let's see how we can just create a simple tree structure so what i did was i simply created one class and named it like node then i simply made one constructor over here i passed the data over here i did was i assigned this data to this data and i took this the left property as null initially and the right property also and the right property to the null okay and after this what i did was simply this was my class simple i kept it simple after that i simply took one root variable and i instantiated it like new node and i passed the data 10 and similarly what we can do is like root dot left equals i gave it like something like seven and root dot right i gave it something like 12 and after this i simply console log the root so uh, so friends as we can see uh, this is the console so we have got this root it has the data of 10 it has the left property and right property as well uh, inside this left we have this data as 7 and left and right null and the right property is 12 which is having left and right as null so this was the solution that i gave to the interview and friends if you have watched this video till this particular you know section then don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel it means a lot so yeah let's move ahead so friends i hope you are not tired so yeah let's have a look at the third question and the third question was to print the midpoint of the linked list so let's suppose this is our linked list 10 7 and 12 so 7 was the midpoint basically the length divided by 2 so let's quickly have a look at this particular solution as well so let's uh, so what i did was i simply created the node first uh, like a class let's have a look at it So friends, this was the simple basic structure of node uh, that could be like having a data and a next property. Okay. Now let's quickly give it some values. So friends, uh, this is how my link list look like. Uh, the data is 10, the head is 10, then the next as 7 and then the next as 12 with the next as null. Okay. So friends, uh, like I am not very good with this uh, DSA. So if any viewer who has a very good understanding and who has a better expertise in this particular field, which is data structures and all. So please tell me in the comment section that, you know, whether I'm writing or solving this particular question in a right approach or not. And if not, then what could be the better approach so that I can also improve and I can also, you know, be better prepared for the upcoming rounds, uh, DSA rounds. So yeah, only, this is the only way that we all can grow. So yeah, so this is the linked list and uh, now what we can do is the approach was to find the length of the linked list first because it is not something like array we can do array dot length we have to find the length and after finding the length uh, we can simply return the we can find the midpoint and we can return that particular value okay so let's quickly write a function to find the uh, length
So friends, uh, this is a small function in which what we are doing is we are simply passing it the head pointer and after that we have simply made one counter with zero and we have simply like stored it in a temporary variable and we are running a while loop until and unless uh, yeah while temp is not equal to null while we have not reached to the end what we are doing is we are incrementing our, our counter by one and we are also incrementing the temporary like simply pointing this pointer to the temp dot next basically if we are on pointer 10 then we are going moving ahead like to 7 and to 12 and we are also incrementing length so yeah so in this particular way we can get our length as 3 so now what we can do is we can have one another function that will be the to print the middle portion so the first edge case that i handled was that if head is not null basically if head is null uh, then we can do is simply return the minus one cool and now what we can do is simply get the length using our function and we can pass the head to it and over here we can accept the head now we can calculate the mid by simply dividing length by 2 okay now after this what we can do is we can simply run a while loop while our middle is not equal to 0 while our middle is not equal to 0 what we are going to do is we are going to uh, like uh, we are going to like move temp to temp dot next and we are also going to do mid equals mid minus one cool and uh, it is crying because yeah cool so we need to have a temp equals head now what else uh, okay so friends one more thing like let's suppose over here we have three nodes so it will give us like 1.5 so we have to do we can do something like parsint or we can do something like math dot flow to get the value okay and uh, yes now what we can do is uh, we can simply return because like we are okay so we have this a uh, mid like let's suppose we have the mid as uh, like 1.5 so 1 okay so initially what we can do is like 1 it is greater than uh, or equal to 0 yeah so uh, we, we will move the temp to the next okay so we are going to move the uh, temp to the next and after that uh, we are also going to decrement the mid now it will become the zero so so over here our loop will like break because now the condition says that while it is not equal to zero and the temp will be pointing to seven so we are going to simply return the temp dot data okay so temp dot data why because you can have a look at the structure our structure has this data property and next property so yeah cool uh, let's uh, console log it let's console so friends as you can see now we have got seven cool so we have got this seven as the midpoint so yeah uh, you can go through this once more we have simply created this structure we have written a function to find the length and then we have simply printed this middle so friends this is it with the dsa round and uh, friends one small uh, like request from you guys do watch this video till the end because you guys fast forward it and the entire video analytics is destroyed basically the watch time so yeah if you have learned something new from this video so don't forget to like share and subscribe and thank you for watching